Hey, welcome to this Excel video. It has been a while, I'm sorry. There has been too much on TV, World Cup and Commonwealth Games. And so I haven't been at my computer as much as I would have liked. But I'm going to do a little quick video here to show something that I only use every once in a while, but it's got some really cool applications. What it is, is a list box. And so the list box here is on the left. You can see a list of names. And rather than choosing from a drop down box, I can just click and things update automatically. Um, completely unnecessarily, but um, just for effect, I also added a tick box there that adds two more series. So that's what we're going to have a look at today. And I'm going to go over to a brand new spreadsheet to get started. So the first thing I need to do is just create some example data. So I've got a list of made up names here on the left. And I'm just going to do a simple ran between, let's say 30 and 90. And I'm going to Hold down control when I hit enter. And because I've got all the cells selected, they're going to all populate at the same time. Next thing I want to do is go copy, paste values. Now, the reason I did that is just because when you have the formulas as ran between, they change and update themselves every time you press save or do something. So it's good just to take that away. Just going to do the average now. All right, and now we can start making a little bit of progress. So I'm going to add a new sheet and I'm going to call it port. I'm going to go to the Developer tab. Now under the Insert button, you can see there are two types, Form Controls and ActiveX Controls. Now we want to choose uh, the Form Control. The reason for that uh, is that if you choose the ActiveX Control, you'll have to do some coding. And so if I do the ActiveX, what we'll see pop up is design mode and it's expecting you to write some code here now it's not super complex code but nevertheless once you start getting into code you need to save it as a different type of workbook one that's macro enabled and just adds complexity so i'm not going to do that today i'm going to choose a regular list box and i'm going to relatively carefully Place it over some cells. Now I'm going to right click on it, format control, and it's taken us to the tab. There's half a dozen tabs or five of them, but this is the key one. I need to tell it what the cell link is and what the input range is. So I'm going to choose for input range. My list of names. And for my cell link, I'm going to choose, uh, that'll do. And now when I click OK, two things are going to happen. First thing that's going to happen is names will appear here. And I can reduce the size of that box to make it fit a bit more nicely. Now the second thing won't happen until I select something. So when I select something, four appears and four is the fourth name on the list that's the 19th name on the list so what i can do is convert that 19 i'm just going to put it out of the way put it up here using the index function the index function is very useful it wants to know what array 
select your names and what row number nineteen we want to return. So basically what's happening now is that when I click on a name it appears here. Alright, just tidying that up a little bit. So what I want to do now is create our little charts. Going to use a little VLOOKUP equation here. What I always find is when you're creating a dynamic chart, it's always nice to have it be really clean. Now you could do it so that it just looks up the table, but what I prefer to do is have the chart range just below or to the side or somewhere else so that it's really easy to understand what's happening if you pick up the spreadsheet a, a year from now and you've forgotten all about it. I'm going to do a VLOOKUP. I want to look up this value and I'm going to hit F4 on the PC. That'll lock that cell in place. I want to look that value up in the first column of this table. And I want to use the column index number two and do an exact lookup. So basically what it's doing is finding the week and telling us what's in the second column. I can drag this across and I could just go three four etc or I could write a function to do that for me so I'm just going to do that now the columns function is very very useful when you're doing this on a large scale and what the columns function does is just does a count of how many columns between the start and the end of a range so we've got a range that goes from A23 to B23 it goes across two columns and so if I evaluate that by hitting F9 we can see a 2 and now because there's a dollar sign in front of the A but not the B when I drag across to the right, they just automatically will update. And now, if I insert a chart like so, I simply have to add my category labels. And things will start to look okay. I'm going to right click on that, move it to my report, and we've already started to make some progress. And now, if I select another name, it updates. So we've got the name up the top, so I don't think we need it on the chart. Um, I'm not going to do anything to that chart, I think it looks okay. Um, the one thing that I do want to do is add a second chart. Don't forget to add the data labels. You have to do it in two steps because I haven't got the uh, data labels in the row above the data itself. And so going back in later and adding them in is a requirement if you do it that way. It doesn't take long, so I feel that that's fine.
Now I've added that in there. I always believe that the cleaner the chart, the better. So to either take away grid lines or make them very light is my preference. And similarly, I believe that you don't need a line around the outside of the chart. And so later on, if you want to go into the view menu, you can turn the grid lines off. Take. That's better. Alright, so we've now got a chart. that updates really easily and because there's such a short list here on the left there's only 19 names there it does work quite nicely with a list box as opposed to a drop down box where you have to um, be clicking a little bit more often now I did want to do one more thing um, I'm going to add in another form of controller it's called a checkbox um, I didn't have it above it but I'm just going to put it below here because it doesn't really matter now I have noticed in Excel 2013 that when I'm deleting the text it sometimes behaves a little bit strangely here we go you can see it's flashing and it really only corrects itself when I click outside it but nevertheless, it worked okay. So what I want to do is right click on this, just like I did for the list box. And I want to give it a cell link on the control panel page. That'll do. Now I want to write an if equation. Now if that equals true, then put team average there, otherwise do blank. I'm going to drag that across one cell, but quite importantly, rather than double quotes for a blank, I'm going to put NA. So if I drag that across, I should get my team average data. And that should map to the starter here, which it does, which is great. So I'm simply now going to, on both charts, add the team average. So I've now got two series on each of the charts. I'll just do a little bit of formatting. So I think that's quite reasonable. I'll put a data label just on the athlete score not sure I need that access now either but anyhow if I am happy with how that looks I can take away the good look and things start to look okay so the real uh, item of interest for today was the use of this list box if you've only got a small number of items it can be quite a nice way to allow a user to quickly click from one item to another 
Thanks for watching. Hopefully my next video won't take me as long. See you soon.